Hi, it's Dina Tollefson and welcome to my studio. I'm so glad to have you here with me today. So if you're like me, you really like flowers and I'm going to show you today how to create some vibrant and expressive purple cone flowers. And I'm going to be showing you uh, using watercolor pencils and then also watercolor that comes in a tube. So you can get watercolor that comes in pans, in tubes, or in watercolor pencil form. And so the difference between watercolor in tubes and watercolor in pans is that in the tubes, you basically just squeeze the tubes as much uh, paint as you need into a little container, and then you add water to it. And what's nice about that is you can um, get a lot of paint at one time onto your brush and you can control really carefully how much your water to pigment ratio, that type of thing. So here are some watercolor brushes I'll be using here today. And those are um, a combination of synthetic and squirrel hair. Here's the sketchbook. And the exciting thing about this sketchbook is this sketchbook is gonna be traveling all over the world. It's a collaboration with Artsy Studios, and Artsy is a good friend of mine, and, uh, and Artsy's holding, hosting a sketchbook tour. So, um, so what's going to happen is this uh, little sketchbook is going to travel all across the world, and each artist in the collaboration is going to be filling up, up a page, uh, they'll each get their own page, with a theme um, to love, not hate, or to choose love instead of choosing hate. And then uh, at the end, Artsy is going to fill in the last page, and then we'll be auctioning the, the filled up book for charity, which I think is really, really neat. So I am the first person on the uh, tour, and uh, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm adding a little bit of water with an eyedropper to the container. This is a Richeson lock box and it has a little lid on it. So what's nice is you can um, take your watercolor from location to location or just leave it in your studio and then there's a little lid that fits on the top. And what's neat is that you can um, uh, let your uh, watercolors dry out if you want in between sessions or you can keep them wet by putting the cover on top. So just a little bit of the orange here, and this is going to be marking the centers of the comb flower. And I am so glad that you're here with me today, and if you are new to my channel, I welcome you. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. And I hope that either way you're going to subscribe and ring that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when I have some new content uh, available for you. So now going into the permanent magenta, laying in some strokes just to show the initial shape of the coneflower petals. Just a few little marks there. Now going back, I'm uh, thinking about each stroke as uh, rather than petting the canvas or petting the paper, that type of thing, and adding a lot of different colors. I'm trying to be very mindful about using each stroke to represent something on the flower. If you've ever used watercolor pencils um, in your artwork, they are super simple to use. Um, they can be used, um, I'm going to be drawing in a little stem here on the first comb flower, but what's nice about these watercolor pencils is they act like a colored pencil, but they actually have watercolor inside of them. And uh, so you can leave it dry and it just adds a little bit of texture to your work and looks like you've layered 
colored pencil with your uh, watercolor but if you get it wet it will dissolve and it will act as though you had put a paintbrush on which is a really neat effect so I kind of like the idea of, of mixing uh, some of the watercolor brush look with some of the watercolor pencils also thinking too about the when I'm putting the watercolor pencil on I'm thinking about the direction of the strokes that I'm using uh, with the pencil I'm aiming for a whimsical and loose and free and expressive uh, kind of statement here so I'm being careful to not um, not be tedious with the strokes. I want to be kind of lighthearted with the strokes and have a feeling of whimsy. Now the cone flower, as it gets closer to the center of the flower, um, there's a little bit of darkness. I'm just going to use this uh, dark plum colored. These are all crayon dash watercolor pencils. And there, uh, if you haven't seen the unboxing I did of these, I also give a little bit more explanation about how to use them, that type of thing, on the Crayon Dash unboxing video. But I really love this kind of just sketchy, loose feeling a person can put on with the watercolor pencil. Let's add just a little bit of this plum color into the stem. There you can see uh, I had a little bit of the area of the stem that was wet from the other petals. You can see how that looked really dark right in there. You can see that's what it looks like when it's activated. Let's go grab a little bit of the red, the Windsor red. This is a uh, Windsor & Newton. Um, these paints are Holbein and Windsor & Newton. This is the Windsor & Newton Red. Just dabbing a little bit of this onto a paper towel, that's a tip. If you um, have your watercolor, you can dab onto a rag or a paper towel. Uh, that will help control how much pigment gets onto, the, um, onto your paper. And again, I'm just being very loose and deliberate with these little marks of color. And by just putting these small deliberate marks, it gives a little bit more strength to the painting. A lot of the tips of the petals on these comb flower are have a little hook at the end. So I want to kind of explore that in the painting. A purple comb flower, um, the flowers that you see here in today's video, uh, these came out of my garden and those were, uh, they are called Pow Wow Wildberry is the cultivar. I also, um, in our, on our property, we grow really three types of purple coneflower. We live in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. On our property, we have uh, a native, a local ecotype that my husband uh, plants for prairie restoration. And then we have uh, Pow Wow Wildberry, um, is this cultivar that you see here, and then also Magnus coneflower. So the Pow Wow Wildberry is a little bit shorter in habit. Um, has quite a few more flowers than the native and it uh, has a really deep dark color and coneflower are native to the United States in the central and southeastern uh, parts of our country they've also been introduced to eastern Canada so here a little bit of ultramarine blue and this ultramarine blue uh, is um, really wonderful because it's very translucent and it also is granulating so it's kind of wonderful for just darkening areas and 
and because it's very transparent, you see the other colors all the way through. And uh, kind of an interesting thing about coneflower is that they are considered endangered in Florida. They're a prairie, uh, prairie flower and a member of the aster family. And they're known as being a medicinal plant. And so Native uh, Americans and the Plains Indians would uh, use coneflower uh, to treat snake bite and toothache and coughs and sore throat and a variety of different things. And in our gardens, the goldfinches and the house finches really love to eat the, pu the purple coneflower right as the flower is ending and the seeds are getting really ripe and developed and the birds will perch up on top of the these sturdy stems that the plants have and they'll start pulling the centers out. Now the purple coneflower that I'm going to be doing in my painting today, I'm going to really focus on uh, having a more of a yellowy orange center. Um, the yellow and the orange really to me represents the pollen in the plant. At one point in flowering it has really um, this covering over it and I'm thinking about the bees and other pollinators coming by and enjoying that pollen. So now using that watercolor pencil, just layering on top of the uh, semi-dried, there's some areas that are dry, some are semi-dry, just adding a little scratchy kind of a little area of interest on top of these petals. You can see I'm activating this with just a little bit of plain water and allowing, and I'm just going to pass over at one time, and what that will do is that will let some of the pigment um, release with the water, and then some of it will still stay in this a little bit of a rougher form, which I like that effect. If I would go back over with the brush and kind of wiggle the brush over the top, I'd be able to dissolve the uh, the watercolor pencil further, but I do like that kind of little scratchy grainy effect, so I'm going to just go over it the one time. And we'll activate the stem here. I'm pulling the watercolor out in a way that um, this, I feel like I'm kind of letting the energy of the plant and of the artwork kind of radiate out. Now coming back in with more watercolor pencil, further defining the shadow side of the flower. This is a Holbein leaf green. So you can layer watercolor over the top of your other watercolors, uh, whether those are watercolors that were already, you know, um, either pan watercolor or two watercolor, or you can layer it right over the top of your watercolor pencil. So lots of different effects you can create. aiming for just kind of a light and fresh approach here to this set of watercolor uh, comb flowers. And so I'm the first person here on the sketchbook tour and uh, next it's going to be going to Helen Schaefer from Sun City Center, Florida, who ha happens to be my mother. 
And after that, it's going to go to Artfully Yours with Diana, another YouTube friend who lives in Pennsylvania. And I hope that when you work on your flowers and your, your watercolors, your paintings, that you will think about color um, any way that you want to. If you want to think of it literally or think of it emotionally, um, to me the red just feels bold and it feels to me like the flower, so I'm including a little bit of that in the petals as well and in the center of the flower. Well, and I hope that you're going to be uh, watching as this uh, sketchbook um, that is filled with love travels from place to place. And I thank you for being here today. And until next time, this is Dina Tollefson. Bye-bye.